Wonderful. I will be sharing screen in this presentation. Hi, I'm Sally Bancalena with Give Me a Break. And this presentation is called, Will You Survive Caregiving? Now, I know most people do not think that they will survive, have to worry about surviving something like caregiving, but believe it or not, it is a civil matter. So I'll be sharing screen throughout most of the uh, most of this presentation. I hope that you can see the screen all right. It's probably um, optimum on a laptop or landscaped on your phone or iPad. So you may want to change that setting and how you're looking at it before we begin or take a moment right now. So will you survive caregiving? Uh, many of you that are here today um, probably were or currently are caregivers to somebody who's maybe trying to survive something themselves. Um, they could be older and they're just trying to survive what it's like as you get older and the issues that come with that and illnesses, or it could be a cancer. Um, someone has cancer or uh, diabetes or some major illness that they're having to deal with. And so you're very focused as a caregiver on their survival. But it may not have occurred to you that you have to realize that you also need to survive. You need to survive caregiving. So I am speaking from experience uh, in the past 10 years of my life, very focused. I was a caregiver for both of my parents and continue to be a caregiver um, for my mother-in-law currently. And of course, the love of my life was going through cancer currently. My mother is in hospice in the final stages of dementia. And so I'm still caregiving for her in that sense. And I was kind of a lifetime caregiver. I have... Um, a son, I have grandchildren, and so parenting is caregiving. Don't ever think that it's not. Your life goes from calm to chaos, it's caregiving. <laughs> and so I am kind of speaking from experience, and I'm hoping that my experience will help others to survive, because caregiving almost killed me, and I hope that it doesn't do that for you. So what you need to, why, well, there we go. So what we need to know is that you do have to survive. And so here are just a couple of statistics that hopefully will uh, wake you up to why you have to survive. Currently, 53% of caregivers suffer increased health issues. 50% of caregivers will pass before their caree. 32% show signs of caregiver burnout. And of those with advanced caregiver burnout, only 2% will survive. So that means that 98% could potentially not survive. So what is the common signs of caregiver burnout? You can see it right there on the screen. They're, you're easily flustered or frustrated. I know that could be just lack of sleep, right? Well, that's another one, lack of sleep. You're forgetful or foggy. You're really tired just all the time. If you're caregiving, for somebody full-time, you find yourself saying that all the time. I'm just so tired. I'm just so tired. You're quick to anger, anxious, or depressed. You're uninterested in things that you used to enjoy. You may even be grieving your past life before caregiving. You feel hopeless or helpless. If you have any of these symptoms, please talk to your doctor immediately. Don't take them for granted or feel that, but that's okay. I'm always like that because I'm always tired and I'm always doing things. If you're caregiving on top of feeling this, then you're high at risk of not surviving. My own father passed from caregiver burnout. He was caring for my mother before I stepped in. My mother had a stroke and a week later, my father fell down a full flight of stairs and broke three ribs. And I suddenly found myself caring for both of my parents. I had no idea that for probably maybe 15, 10, 15 years prior, my parents had been dealing with my mother's dementia and hiding it from everyone. And so that weight went completely on my father. And it eventually caught up to him. A year and a half after caring for both of my parents, my father passed. And he had a stroke that was brought on from caregiver burnout. Once I started taking care of my mother, I nearly followed him. So never underestimate the signs of caregiver burnout. If you have any of these signs, you could possibly not survive. So what is a survivor anyway? I'm talking about it so much. Well, this is a person 
a, a person who survives is a person remaining alive after an event in which others have died. I'm gonna say that one more time. I'm gonna move my screen over here where I can see it better. Sorry, I apologize. There we go. A person who survives is a person remaining alive after an event in which others have died. So we can expect that others have passed and 50% of caregivers do. So in order to survive it, you have to be uh, the other half that does. It's a person who copes well with the duties of their life. That's how you survive. So will you survive caregiving is my question to all of you. I want you to take a moment and I want you to think of three of the most important people to you. Just off the top of your head, take a moment and think of three people, the most important people in your life. Okay, hopefully you thought of them right quick. So let me ask you this question. Were you on that list? If you weren't, it's common because caregivers tend to put themselves last, right? And so if you weren't on the list, that means that you don't exist as someone that you take care of. And so who's caring for the three most precious people to you? So as a caregiver, if you do not put yourself on that list and care for yourself, then you will not survive and there won't be anyone there to care for those who are most important to you. Also, if you put yourself last on the list, then you could potentially cause physical and mental harm to yourself. You have to be the one that's strong and healthy. And so, you know, so many people talk about being in a plane. And when you're in the plane, they tell you, in case of an emergency, the oxygen mask will drop. If you are traveling with a child, you know the rest, whose do you put on first? And yet, as caregivers, we put ourselves last. So I hope that gives you something to think about. Because what you want to do is make sure that not only are you on the list, but that you're at the head of that list that you're not only setting an example for others to follow, but that you're taking care of yourself so that you can survive. Now, when you're a caregiver, you're responsible for someone else's well-being, and it's easy to put yourself last on the list, like I said. You may not even have given yourself a thought to put yourself on that list. You may even feel that you aren't doing enough to be on the list. So we need to understand why we feel that way because sometimes we may feel guilty. So why do we feel that way? Let's understand it a little bit more because understanding what you don't know you don't know and what you do know will save you. Are you feeling any of these? I'm just gonna read them off. You feel you don't spend enough time with the person you're caring for, your caree. You don't call or visit often enough. You haven't made the person you're caring for happy. Everyone in your family is relying on you to be the caregiver. You can never do enough or please everyone, including the loved one for whom you're caring. Remember, if you're feeling any of these, understand them. You're upset. You didn't recognize symptoms sooner. Maybe they wouldn't have suffered that stroke if you'd been paying more attention. Maybe they wouldn't have fallen if you had paid more attention. Are you feeling any of these things? You're stressed by the constraints of caregiving and you lose it. You're mean and angry, not as compassionate or caring as you could or should be. And you know you don't want to be that person. You can't take time to do something special for yourself. 
whether it's a weekend away or just an afternoon in a park, you can barely enjoy that break, even if you do. Taking care of a loved one has become a dreaded obligation. You're embarrassed, maybe even disgusted by what you have to deal with. I know it was hard for me. I actually had to learn to change a catheter for my father. I never thought that would happen. Bathing my mother. I never thought I would have to do that. You've had to put your carry in assisted living or a nursing home, even when you promised them you wouldn't. If you relate to any of these things, then you are probably carrying some kind of guilt feelings. Feelings of caregiver guilt are very real. And what is it? Knowing that guilt is defined in the dictionary as wrong is why we do not deal with guilt well. And that's why we often feel like we've done something wrong when we really, really haven't. Caregivers, you are doing the best that you can. And that does not mean that you have to feel that that is wrong. Like it says here, there's really no manual for it. No one taught us what we have to do. No one told us how to do it. So feeling guilty is not wrong. It's a normal part of being a human. We can't allow it to consume us. Feeling guilty is part of the caregiving experience. It's part of the process. You are normal and know that you haven't done anything wrong and that you're not alone. We all feel it. You're really dealing with a difficult situation and you're doing the best that you can, so don't be so hard on yourself. You really are worthy. And if anyone hasn't told you recently, you're amazing and you're awesome. And you can survive this. And that is the most important point that you can get, if anything, from this presentation tonight. I hope that helps. When, you take, when, you, when you're feeling all of this and you're feeling guilty and you're feeling, and there's an ambulance in the background. I don't know if you can hear it, but I live near a, a care home. And so I deviate for a second, but because I live near a care home, we hear a lot of ambulance. And I think to myself every time, maybe that's somebody at the care home, but it could also be a caregiver. And so we don't want to be that statistic. So we need to take one day at a time. Manage our guilt. Embrace your guilt. It's okay to feel that way. It's normal. Don't let it cause you any negativity, any depression. Try to be positive and take that one day at a time. Control what's yours to control. Sometimes as caregivers, we want to control everything because it makes it easier for us. Or, I don't know, maybe we're just control freaks in life. And that starts with letting go of caregiver guilt. So sometimes we need to let go of that guilt, let things kind of be and recognize the positive that's going on in a situation. Take it one day at a time. We had our support session last night and one of the things that I talked about was that um, it's so easy to see the negative around us. And sometimes the positive might be a tiny little thing but it's so important for us to recognize that positive and not be consumed by the negativity around us. And sometimes we worry or feel guilty or get frustrated based on what's coming. And so you might need to just bring yourself to be in the moment rather than trying to get everything done ahead of time. So taking one day at a time is really about being mindful and being in that moment and finding that positive in each and every moment, because the negative will always exist, but it's up to us to find that positive. Remember all the thousands of times you did do the right thing. You did show love and patience, and you really did your best every time. And that helps you to accept you and to care for you. Because I'll tell you that frustration and worry and all of that negativity about being a failure or not doing the right thing, that takes its toll on your internal organs and releases chemicals in your brain that can cause damage to all of your internal organs and to your physical condition. So it's bad for you both mentally and physically. 
So look for that positive, force that positive, because that's going to help you to survive. Your mission is to live your best life. Caregiving is not necessarily your mission. Caregiving is what you're doing because of need. Maybe you are a lifetime caregiver and it is your mission. Then you need to find joy in your mission and your passion. So you need to embrace you. Find the positive and embrace it and let the negative go because it's always going to be there. You just don't need it in your life or your physical health. It's really all part of a caregiving journey. But if we make that journey one of joy, then every moment will make a difference. You'll create more memories than more dreads and more things that you want to forget. So one of the most important things you can do is to practice self-care. And then the second is to find a mission in your life. Don't give up on that. We're all still alive because we each have a purpose and mission in life. So if you just do those two after today's session, really start focusing on self-care and find that mission in your life. If you just do that, you're already changing the statistic. And that's what we want to do. So your survival really does depend on you. Self-care, like I said, most important thing you can do. Self-care is not selfish. Let that be your new mantra. Your wellness matters. So make a wellness plan now. You need help? Give us a call. Join our support sessions every Tuesday evening at 8 p.m. or Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. And you can go on to our Facebook page or wherever you saw that the ad for this, or go to our website at gab808.org, and you'll be able to join in on our support sessions. We're just a community of caregivers, not professionals. We're not going to fix your head. We're not going to fix your body. We're just going to support one another as a community. So join us anytime if you need that help or are willing to accept it. But you don't have to take my word for it. I'd love to share this caregiver, Dave Nisani, and I'd love to share him with you. And I'm gonna just play his video here. This is a wonderful person who uh, does this TED Talk and, and I think you'll enjoy hearing what he has to say. Just looking for that, there it is. So please enjoy a moment of this. Almost everybody out there who can hear my voice is eventually going to care for a parent, a grandparent, or a loved one. Or maybe you're that one that's going to eventually need care. The National Association of Family Caregivers says that one third of the population of the U.S. are already caregivers. Of those, roughly half of them are feeling down, depressed, and hopeless on a regular basis. That's according to AARP. Many of them will become sicker than the ones they care for, eventually needing a caregiver of their own. Now, the worst part is 30% of these caregivers will actually die before their loved ones do. So says agingcare.com. If you're not a caregiver, just wait. You'll either become one or you'll need one. That's why now is the time to prepare and learn how to become a caregiver, not after tragedy strikes. You see, caregivers need to learn how to become selfish if they want to survive. I know this firsthand. Let me tell you why. My wife Charlene and I had a fairy tale, storybook romance, courtship, and marriage for the first 21 years of our lives together. We were in love with each other so much, I just knew I had to marry this girl before she got away. We raised our three daughters, 
We got them all out of the house. We even got them married off. All, all three of them twice. I think you're only supposed to pay for the first marriage. <clears throat> we now have seven grandchildren. And right about the time that my wife and I were supposed to be entering into the empty nest phase of life, where we go wherever we want, whenever we want, don't have to worry about leaving the kids in the house to wreck the place, and we have the freedom and the independence and the finances. One day, my wife complains to me about this bad headache that she had for three days. She called it the headache of her life. It just wouldn't go away. One day, I realized that actually it was the fourth day. On that fourth day, that headache ceased being only a headache. By the time the ambulance arrived, my wife had suffered a massive stroke. And it left her severely speech impaired and paralyzed in the right time. And in that moment, I was no longer just her husband. I was now her husband and her caregiver. The next two years was like a living hell for both of us. I had no idea what I was doing. I, I made a mistake in the book. Every mistake a caregiver would possibly make. It wasn't on my resume. I didn't even know what a caregiver was. However, I quickly learned that if I didn't become selfish, there was no way I was going to make this thing. I could have ruined my health. I might have even died before my wife with him. I quickly started realizing that I was experiencing the same problems that other caregivers experienced. The first one is the guilt. I started feeling guilty all the time, but I quickly realized just because I was feeling guilt didn't mean that I necessarily deserved it. The next big problem that was plaguing me was this feeling that I was always never getting any help. But worse than that, it was because I couldn't even ask for help. I just had it in my mind. If I couldn't do this all by myself, failure as a caregiver. That doesn't look good on the resume. It wasn't long before I started feeling these isolation feeling, like I was all alone in the world. My friends stopped calling, stopped coming by. I don't blame them because I was always negative and complaining when they did. Who wants to be around that? It wasn't long before I just started feeling hopeless and helpless. I remember screaming out. I don't even know who heard me. I can't take this anymore. Yes, I was talking to God. <laughs> I just went on in my pain because I didn't know what to do. But thank God that somebody invited me to a caregiver support group. I didn't know what that was, but I was desperate, so I went. And everything changed for me. I found people who were just like me, burned out caregivers. I found people. I remember that the airlines tell us in the event of an emergency, put your mask on first before you help your loved one. What an amazing metaphor for all of life. I had to learn that if I didn't become selfish, there was no way I was going to survive this. And if I didn't survive, who was going to take care of Charlene? Let me talk about depression. With all the recent suicides in the news lately, we have to ask this question. If there is depression, is suicide far behind? Anthony Bourdain, Kate Spade, Robin Williams. These celebrities are no longer with us because they succumb to that suicidal depression that affects caregivers as well. Yet we don't hear about how many caregivers died in the news, just celebrities. Another important reminder why caregivers 
need to learn to become selfish in order to survive this thing so that their loved ones can continue to receive their care. Everybody asks me, so how's your wife doing? And I proudly say, well, because I learned how to become selfish and put my needs first, she's doing great. She's advanced through the grief process and she has embraced the new normal and reinvented herself and figured out that if she's still alive, God must still have a purpose for her here on this earth. Now, she still can't talk, but she can communicate non-verbally through Pictionary, Charade, the games I hate, by the way, but I'm learning to love. She still can't walk, but we bought her a power chair, and she loves it. She gets to go wherever she wants now. That chair has been all over the world with me, and I have trouble keeping up with it. And anyone who meets her for the first time is thoroughly amazed at how she has a smile on her face all the time and joy in her heart. She's my hero. I am so proud of her. She's like a one-armed wallpaper hanger. And I just don't know how she does it. But because of Charlene, I can now help other caregivers stay alive and stay healthy. I want you to imagine for a moment what the world could look like if every new caregiver was already capable, ready, and healthy, and was easily able to maintain those qualities for as long as they cared for their loved ones. If every caregiver can learn to become selfish in order to survive, and if they can really do that, they will become stronger, healthier, and happier not only in their caregiving responsibilities, but in everything that they strive for in life. I'm living proof, uh, accent on the living part. Honestly, I promise you, you will not only survive this thing called caregiving, you will thrive, you will be joyful, and you will be the best Giver of care to your loved ones. I guarantee it. Just remember whose mask goes on first. Thank you. What an amazing, amazing soul. And by the way, this was done uh, back in, I think it was 2006, it might have been, or maybe it's 2020, I can't remember. Um, however, uh, he, um, he still had the 30% statistic. And just in the last three years, that statistic has gone from 30% survival to 50%, um, 30% that will pass, sorry, to 50% that will pass. So it's not going, it's not getting better, it's getting worse. And so it's an alarm for us to make sure that we are surviving caregiving. And Give Me a Break is here to help. Give Me a Break came from my experience in caregiving where I said no caregiver should ever have to feel this way, should ever have to go through what I went through. No one. And that's our mission and our goal. So we're here to support you. And we're here to support survival. And we want to change that statistic. We want to turn it around from 50%. We don't want it to go to 60%. We don't want it to go any more. We don't even want it to go to 51. We want to turn it around. So we do have weekly support sessions. We offer you community. We have events and workshops like this, presentations. Pass the word around. Let other caregivers know we're here. We have resources available to you. We also have Giver's Guides, which is our online magazine that is created just for caregivers. Articles only for caregivers, resources only for caregivers. It is the only magazine out there for caregivers. We do presentations and workshops like these, and we have our retreat, which we're coming up in August. So keep tuned in. 
check out our website at gab808.org and know that you can be a caregiving survivor. You can, and we are going to be survivors and we are gonna change that statistic. So like I said, more things coming up. And so make sure you come to our next session that will be simple steps to self-care as I task you now with self-care. Your wellness matters. And so Lonnie Almanza, uh, next week, Wednesday evening on the 12th at eight o'clock, we'll be doing simple steps to self-care. And if you missed that, she'll be doing a, it again, a repeat on Saturday the 15th at 11 a.m. Right after our nine o'clock session, she will be doing her presentation. So get on our website and get pre-registered for that. Also uh, coming up will be 10 tips to caregiver survival that I'll be doing on the 19th and uh, caregiving and dementia. Uh, and so that's coming up at the end on the 26th, on the Wednesday, the 26th. And you notice they're either on a Wednesday or a Saturday, Wednesday evening or a Saturday morning. And I did give you a sneaky peeky here of the calendar for May. So in May um, is the, the, the first week of May is actually the National Falls Prevention Week. So I will be doing a presentation on fall prevention, not necessarily just for your care. -y. This is fall prevention for caregivers. You'd be surprised at this presentation. Uh, also, uh, then we'll be doing, uh, we'll be talking about a care receiving plan. Uh, probably haven't thought of that because one day, as Dave had mentioned, we're all gonna need a caregiver. So do you know how you want to be cared for? What's your plan? That's what that one's about. Uh, Melinda Chenen, who's amazing, she's a grief coach. She's going to be talking about milestones of grief and doing a workshop. She's amazing. Uh, she does it free. All of this is free of charge to all, all any caregiver. And then we have self-care outside and it's outside in and inside out. Lani Almanza will be doing that one. It's pretty awesome. And then letting go of caregiver guilt. I'll be doing that. And then finally ending the month of May with finding your purpose. So that was the other thing I tasked you with today, was not only self-care and wellness and taking that moment to be positive and work on that for yourself, but also to find your purpose in life. And so I'll be talking about that at the end of May. We'll be doing this um, also through June and uh, July, and then we'll be taking a break um, in, I believe, August and September and then in, uh, re restarting in October, and then taking a break November and December. So we've got lots of events and things that will be happening. We have our charity walk coming up in July, lots of things. Our, our, our retreat is free as well. It's a full day. And it also includes a pamper session for you. And our pamper session is where you get pampered. You get a massage, you get aromatherapy. Oh, it's awesome. It's awesome. So Give Me a Break is here for you. That's what we do with caregiving. I know I went maybe a couple minutes over time. This was a half hour presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this helps you um, and gets you through caregiving. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm going to stop recording now. If any of you would like to ask any questions off camera, I will stay on for a few more minutes. So mahalo and thanks for tuning in this evening. And please be good to yourself. Put yourself first on that list. It's okay to be selfish. Self-care is not selfish. You need to survive caregiving. Mahalo.